Here's a simple Tanstack -like Start application. We're going to see together how you can sign up. And wait, the user is already registered. In that case, we're going to see how you can sign in this time. And also, since I'm a logged in user, I can get a user profile. Here I got some personal information, which you can obviously update. And the update is also seen here. And last but not least, well, I can also sign out. Today's topic is authentication with Tanstack Start. We're going to see together an example with Superbase. Subscribe to the channel and let's begin. First of all, let's have a look at the sign up page. This is a simple route that you can find here inside slash app slash routes. And here you can already see a spoiler about redirection, but we're going to see that later. First of all, this is a simple page with inside a signup form, which basically it's just a simple form tag with some labels and some input. Nothing too fancy here. And I'm going to do that again with Tanstack form. But let's move on for today's video. In our on submit, we're just going to get the form data and send those to a mutation. And that's where the interesting thing begins. Our mutation is in fact using a signup function that, yep, I do my guess is a server function for Tanstack start. What happens here is that first of all, we run our payload through a signup schema. In this case, it's a Zot schema, but you can use any standard schema library, including Valibot, Archetype, and many others. And if the validation is successful, you're now sure that your payload is exactly the shape you wanted it to be. With that, I can pass my email and password to the Superbase signup function. And if something goes wrong, you can decide if you want to handle the Superbase errors, everything is type safe, or just return a generic error. Or if everything went fine, well, you can, for example, just return the user ID. But before moving on, what is this get Superbase server client? Well, if you already did this implementation on Next.js, you're going to see that it's pretty much the same. It's a function that only runs in your server, which basically takes a couple of parameters you should put in your environment and takes care of all the cookies. And with this utility, every time you create a server function, you get simple access to the Superbase instance. And the cool thing about Superbase is that right after a successful signup call, you're also automatically signed in. But in case you're coming to the application later, let's have a look about the sign-in form. In this case, I can just click sign in and after a loader goes real fast, I'm already find myself logged in. And you can also notice here that now I can see my profile that isn't available when the user is logged out. And the code, unsurprisingly, is super similar to the sign-up form. Here we've got a sign-in page, again with the redirect if the user is already authenticated, the signup for component that mimics pretty much the same behavior of the signup for. We have our simple form with username and password. Those are just so that the demo runs faster. And then I can send a mutation with my data. And then the sign in flow is exactly the same as the signup flow. I've got a validation schema. And then I can use the function signing with password coming from Superbase. And well, that's basically it. But what happens here when calling the Superbase function to signing and to sign up, for example, is that Superbase takes care of the authentication cookies for us. And that's basically the system that lets us know that the user is in fact authenticated. But let me show you how it works. Well, first of all, here I've got a get user function that again calls the Superbase server client. And then through the auth helper runs get user. This is basically giving us a user in case the store cookies are actually matching to a proper and valid session, or it's going to return an empty object if the user is not signed in. With that, we can decide if we want to return just a payload with is authenticated false, or we want to return is authenticated true and all the data from the user. And to make sure everything is working here on a type level, you can also specify the authentication state here, which basically says that it out state is either authenticated false or authenticated true and we have a user. But you might wonder, okay, cool, but where am I calling this get user function? And we're gonna see that in a moment. Well, first of all, it's wrapped here inside these old queries. Now for a super small application like this one, it's probably not necessary, but this helps in case your application gets bigger. And this is used in quite a lot of different places. But the most important one is here inside our route. Well, what happens here is that in the before load setting of our route, we want to make sure that we have the query data for outquery.user. That is exactly the one we saw one second ago. And with that, with basically using Tanstack query, 
to ensure that we have the old state. And the really smart way of using it across our entire application is to simply return our old state from inside our before load. As a result, if for example, I go to the profile page, well, here you can see that context contains the query client and the old state, even though I just defined that my route only has query client in the context. And this basically happens thanks to this return statement here, making sure that our old state is inside the context of our router. And with that, I can implement all kinds of guards. For example, that here I can only access the profile page if our user is authenticated. If it is not authenticated, well, I can simply throw a redirect to our homepage. Now, if you notice, here I use ensure query data and I use the query from Tansta query. But a different approach I might use is to simply run get user here directly from our servant function. And this also works, but let me show you the difference. With this setting, every time I try to preload a route, you can see here that the get user function is immediately called. And this might be something you want in your use case, but the difference with the other approach, if I just command Z a few times, is that with this setup instead, the get user function is only called the first time on the server, that's why you don't see it here, and it is only refreshed if I actually need it. For example, I'm on this page, if I click log out, I'm now invalidating my data manually, and that's why you can see here, right after calling sign out, it automatically calls again get user, and with that, the UI updated to show that I'm no longer signed in. And that's exactly what our logout is doing. It's basically a function that, first of all, triggers our sign out function that has the simple out from Superbase. And right after that, we're going to do two different actions. First of all, we're going to await the query invalidation of our user, and then we're going to invalidate our route. But let me authenticate again, because the last thing I wanted to show you is, in fact, how you can update your user profile. You can see here that I've got Mario123 and I can edit my text. I can press enter. My profile has been updated. And again, the user profile is here up to date. And this is basically a combination of everything we've seen so far. So first of all, I've got a profile card. Once again, this is a simple form that runs a mutation. And in this case, our mutation is here, this function update user, which is once again, a servant function, once again, with a validator. And here we can use the Superbase method called update user, where we can basically store the metadata we want inside our user object. Right after updating our user, we can call our invalidate query that will tell real query to please refresh this query. And with that, we get our data back and updated into our UI. But with that said, what about implementing a dark mode selector? I think I'm gonna show that in the next videos. So <laughs> subscribe if you're interested. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.